Okay, so uh, 52, in the muscles, uh, capillaries of a mammal, the oxygen partial pressure is 40, and the hemoglobin saturation is 62% of the following. Figure 1 suggests that this mammal is most likely to be A. Okay, so uh, we're looking at the curves, and, um, well, if you look at uh, the names of the animals, in the right part of the curve, it goes from elephant, horse, man, sheep, down to rat and mouse. So obviously it's going from the biggest animal down to the uh, uh, smallest. And, and the curves are in order from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So um, when, when it asks uh, this question, um, uh, oxygen partial pressure of 40, I look at the curve, I look at oxygen partial pressure of 40, I go up and I see 60, you know, yeah, probably 62% for number four. Then I look for number four and I see sheep. I look around for sheep and I do not see sheep anywhere. But then I also don't see bat, camel, or rabbit. But I assume that a bat is probably um, uh, about the size of a mouse or something, or, or a man if he's a superhero. Okay, forget that. So, and then there's uh, camels, probably, um, you know, a horse. Uh, size of a horse, a rabbit, perhaps a cat, you know, um, from the list of things that we have. And so the wolf is looking sheepish, she, I can't even say it, sheepishly and unexpectedly to be uh, the animal to be the size of a sheep. And, uh, and so um, 52 would be B. So 53 of the following, what's most consistent with the fact that in general, smaller animals have... It says thicker capillary walls than do larger animals. Well, it doesn't seem consistent with the curves. If anything, uh, you know, it looks like it would be the opposite, and I'll explain in just a moment. A more rapid me metabolic rate than do um, larger mammals. Well, it, it, this would make uh, sense, you know, if you've ever had a kitten or a gerbil and you've uh, felt their pulse, if you've had that curiosity, you'd see that, uh, you know, their heart beat. At, at incredible rate and even you when you were tiny very 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 tiny before you were born uh, your heart your resting heart rate could have been 160 180 beats per minute and if your resting heart rate is doing that right now you will die of a heart attack very soon because uh, the human body cannot sustain a resting heart beat at, uh, at that level as an adult it's it's it can't be done so smaller organisms, smaller mammals have very high uh, metabolic rates. And we'll, we'll look at that in just a second. Then C, smaller surface volume ratio than do larger animals. It's quite the opposite. And, um, and so basically what we're seeing here is that for smaller organisms, there's a right shift of the oxygen um, uh, dissociation curve. A right shift, meaning you, you see that the smaller animals are more towards the right-hand side. And um, hopefully through your review, you may have learned uh, some information about this right shift. And in, in us, we even have a right shift. We can do that. And that usually happens when our tissue is very active. There's, uh, because when our tissue is active, when, when our muscles are hot or acidic, um, or hypercarbic, meaning high amounts of uh, carbon dioxide, or, or lactate, lactic acid uh, being the cause of the um, acidity, then um, because of this active muscle, active tissue, we have increased oxygen unloading. And in order to have increased oxygen unloading to our tissues, which are starved for it, we have a right shift. So it makes sense that these organisms that are small and have high metabolism have rightward uh, curves because they need increased oxygen uh, metabolism. And um, uh, yes, so, you know, some sections uh, uh, to, to read about this more, 7.51, 7.52, and uh, 12.3. Still another question in this <clears throat> unit. In mammals, hemoglobin molecule consists of four subunits, each of which can bind on oxygen. The sigmoid shape curve of the oxygen dissociation curve indicates a fully saturated hemoglobin molecule loses oxygen from one subunit. And then 
Well, basically, the binding of uh, oxygen to hemoglobin is cooperative. It, it means that when oxygen first binds to hemoglobin, the first subunit, the first of four subunits, it is difficult. But then it facilitates the, uh, the binding of the second and third molecule, and so the curve is, um, is sigmoid. It has that very steep part uh, in the middle. Uh, you know, obviously I've exaggerated it, but um, it has this steep part in the middle, and that's it doesn't have it doesn't go up slowly or whatever, and that's caused by the facilitated bonding of um, of the uh, cooperative um, uh, bonding of of hemoglobin. So um, because of that, because it's easier to bond the second and third. A molecule because this is the shape of the curve well it doesn't matter if you're going up this way or going down this way it's easier to bond it and that means it's easier to lose the second and um, a third oxygen molecules and so 54 is uh, C